Hey guys, what's up? It's Nolly here, and I wanted to do a tutorial on getting the multi-output routing set up in contact in Logic. Now, this is something we get a lot of questions about. Understandably so, it's a little bit confusing. Contact can be, yeah, a little bit opaque. But if you follow this, you should find it's actually not too tricky, and you'll be up and running in no time. So I've created a blank uh, session in Logic, and I've just put one software instrument in there. So I'm going to go to uh, Instrument, I'm going to go to AU Instruments, Native Instruments, Contact 5, and I'm going to select Multi-Output, 16 times Stereo. That's pretty important to choose that option. So this will initialize Contact. Here we go. Um, now, what I still need to do is create a bunch of auxes for this instrument, because essentially what we want to be able to do is send the various kit pieces, the various channels from GGD to different uh, different tracks on the mixer, so that we can mix them independently. We can you know, compress and EQ the snare drum separately from the cymbals and whatnot, which is pretty necessary. It's actually very easy in Logic. All I need to do is click this little plus sign here, and I'm going to do it 15 times. So I'm going to have 16 total tracks, which is what we uh, selected. You might well not need every single one of these. Um, but I'm just going to create the maximum number here. So the, the final output should be contact 32. And you, you can see along the top, it's kind of labeled them um, to go with what will be our outputs from contact. Now, we don't really need to look at this for the time being. Um, let's look back at contacts. Now, this output section down here is going to be um, where we're mainly working. And you might see something different to this. You might well see a kind of surround sound output. And these auxes might also be sent to some output. Um, if they are, what I recommend you do is um, disconnect them by going onto this this channel here. And if you click where it says not connected, it would say connected to something. It would be one of these channels. But just kind of scroll down to the bottom and make sure that they are actually not connected to anything. Um, beyond that, it shouldn't matter too much. And if you're not seeing this output section, it's, it's toggled by this button up here that says output. So don't worry too much about what's there apart from the orcs having uh, blank outputs there. What we're going to do now is click Add Channels. And since we want to create 16 channels, type 16 into this first thing here. Sorry, I'm saying channels, but uh, tracks would probably be better. Uh, number of channels refers to whether they're stereo, mono, or surround. So make sure that's on 2. Then on this drop-down menu, select Stereo 1 as the first output, and check this box here that says Ascending Output Assignment. That's going to mean that it starts at outputs 1 and 2 and ascends. And then uh, delete the existing channels before creating new ones so that we're basically starting from, from scratch. And if you like, you can do what I would do, which is to make this our default configuration. Because to be honest, I think this is going to make a lot more sense for basically any software instrument you're using in contact. So check that box while you're working. And uh, click OK. So now you should see we have uh, we have 16 stereo outputs. You can see stereo up to 16, going up to outputs 31 to 32. And these are going to correspond exactly with the output names along the mixer in Logic here. So that's pretty good. Um, one thing that's a little bit strange in contact is, like, I don't know, if you change, like, what I'm going to do basically is rename these channels now before I even open GGD, because it can just mean sometimes you have to close contact and reopen it for GGD to see the names that we give to the channels. So yeah, that's uh, kind of on contact, I'm afraid. Um, what I would do is, um, personally, I would, I would give us options of having basically most of the channels that we have on the mixer. You can do this however you like, but uh, just bear with me while I go through and name these. So I'm going to start with kick. Um, I'm going to have the snare top, um, snare bottom. Um, we'll do the tom separately. So that's tom one, tom two, tom three, tom four. I'm going to put the hat separately, get the ride separately. I'm just going to do a misc channel, which is going to be for you know like the stack, the splashes, and the uh, the China close mics. They can all kind of just go through one stereo channel. Then we've got overheads. We've got um, near room, and we have um, far room. So I'm not using all of these channels by any means, but you might want to really separate things out, and you've probably got enough channels there to do so. So with that done. Um, if you want, you can actually save this as a new default, but uh, I wouldn't in case you're using some other some other instruments there. We're going to hit Browse and open GGD Help and Drums. So here is uh, the GGD uh, interface here that you've probably seen at this point. Now, 
it's quite simple from here, really. Uh, all you need to do is send, see where it says default down here, is send these to the appropriate output. So, for example, on the kick, I'm going to send uh, the close mic to kick channel. I'm going to send this one to the overheads. This one can go to the near room. This one goes to the far room. And now you'll see if I actually kick here, we'll look at the mixer down here, and you'll see that. Uh, wait. Okay. Because of the, uh, yeah, I'm not hearing that sound because of the way it's routed for this video stuff. But um, nonetheless, you can see we've got a close close kick mic here. Then we've got overheads on Orgs 10. Um, we have the room mics there. And you could go, of course, and rename all of these channels to correspond with what you've done there. If I go through and do the same thing with snare, we'd put, I'd personally put the two top mics through one channel. And then we've got snare bottom, um, overheads, near room, and far room. I'll just go through and do all of this so you can see kind of every step of the way. So that's Tom 1, Tom 2, Tom 3, Tom 4, overheads, near room, and far room, symbols. Uh, I put the hats on a separate channel, I put the rides on a separate, and then these ones are going to be our, oops, our MISC channels. And then we've got overheads, near room, and far room. And now, we should see that we've got kick coming through there, we've got snare, you can see there's a top channel and bottom channel there, um, kind of coming through aux one and two. I could even just rename these quickly so you can see. Um, we've got that, we've got tom one, we've got tom two, tom uh, three, tom four, we've got hats, ride, um, misc, overheads, near room, far room. And that's all of them. So we don't need 13 through to 15. I can even, uh, wait, yeah, I can delete these because we're not actually routing anything to them. And we should see at this point that, yep, we're getting all of that working just fine. Uh, yeah, we've got, for example, the hats are coming through on our hats channel here. We've got the, uh, the symbols there all coming through the overheads. We've got our ride coming through on the ride channel. Now you might want to kind of crank these mics here to get more output um, on the mixer as you see fit. But basically, yeah, everything should should work out as fine. Tom one, Tom two, Tom three, and Tom four. Oh wait, obviously I did something wrong there. Yep, I put that on Tom three as well. But anyway, so obviously this is a very kind of stream of thought. You can see how I'm doing things. It really didn't take too long to do that. And what you could do now is kind of save a, a logic uh, preset um, for all of this and you'll never really have to think about it again. So yeah, I hope that's helpful and um, yeah, please enjoy GTD and head over to getgooddrums.com at all times to see what we're up to and uh, yeah, all the best guys.